Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Metal objects surround us. From the chairs you sit in to the vehicles you drive, metals are so important that humanity advanced from the Stone Age to the Bronze Age and from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age due to the discovery of new metals. Even though these metals were discovered much earlier than the advent of the respective ages, the methods of working on them were not developed. Almost all metals are hard solids which make them impossible to work on. So how do we change their shapes, size, texture and form to our required way. This is done by various metallurgical processes. The metal is made soft by bringing its temperature close to its melting point and then shaped. This is called forging. When the metal is melted by bringing it to its melting point and then shaped, it's called casting. Different metals retain their hardness in different manners with different procedures. A good example for this statement are swords. Iron or steel swords are hardest when they are forge shaped whereas bronze swords are strongest when they are cast. In this video, we'll talk in brief about forging and also the types of forging techniques used. Forging is among the oldest of the known metal working processes. As we discussed, during the forging process, the metal is heated to very high temperatures and then shaped with the help of external forces. In the olden days, they were done by a blacksmith with the help of an anvil and hammer. Later, the blacksmith hammer was replaced by trip hammers. The trip hammers channeled the power of downflowing water and used it to lift huge hammer heads. This vastly increased the size of metal that can be worked on along with the speed of production. These trip hammers are the basis for all modern industrial forge hammers, which are powered by hydraulics, electricity or compressed air. These hammers have a reciprocating weight of upwards of one ton. To give you a small idea of how big these hammers can get, we'll show a picture of one of these hammers. The Crusoe steam hammer built in 1877 is 25 feet high and was able to deliver a blow of up to 100 tons on the workpiece. Forging is done to increase the strength of a metal. This is especially true for iron as forged iron is much stronger than cast or machined iron. The disadvantage of forging is that it is not applicable to all metals. This is the reason why you'll mostly hear about cast aluminium but not forged aluminium. Forging is broadly classified into hot forging process and cold forging process. Just like the name suggests, the hot forging process is when the metals are plastically deformed above their recrystallization temperature. In cold forging, the metals are shaped in the ambient temperature and this is usually below their recrystallization temperature. Cold forging is most commonly used to make small metal items like screws and nails. It is also called a chipless forming process as it often requires no machining to be done. The biggest advantage of the cold forging process is mass production. Because of this, the process is most commonly used to mass produce small components like screws, bolts and nails. The process also requires very little finishing work on the end product. This also saves money to the manufacturer and is economical. However, this process cannot be used for complex shapes. There is also a chance that the finished component tends to have residual stress in it. The next type of forging process is hot forging. In hot forging, the raw material of metal is heated to very high temperatures and then shaped. There are many types of hot forging processes. We'll be having a detailed discussion of these in our next video. Until then, take care and bye.